There may be no greater American than George Washington. Washington became the first United States president in 1789 with his unanimous victory in the first American election. He was also unanimously elected to a second term in 1793. The only president ever to garner 100% of the electoral votes. Washington was also the commander-in-chief of the First Continental Army that fought the British when the country was not yet established. His epic crossing of the Delaware River to recover New York City is still considered one of the greatest military moves in the history of warfare. At the time of the crossing, the British had taken Boston and New York. The Continental Army was on the run and disorganized. But Washington had a plan. He decided to take his troops across the Delaware River in the middle of winter. This was a move that many military minds thought impossible, but not Washington. The Americans were able to take New Jersey and change the course of the war. Another landmark monument for Washington was the winter at Valley Forge. In 1777, Washington led an army of more than 11,000 troops into Valley Forge in Pennsylvania where the army suffered through a cold winter that claimed the lives of 3,000 men. When the spring arrived, instead of a demoralized, beaten-up group of soldiers, the army emerged battle-ready and able to continue the fight against the English in New York. The army was able to survive the fierce winter because of the training and preparedness of Washington's officers. Washington earned the nickname the Father of His Country because of his military intelligence and his concern for the people of the United States. Abraham Lincoln is a name that is forever embedded into the collective conscience of every American. It is perhaps the most recognizable name in the history of the country, even as his death occurred approximately 150 years ago. Lincoln presided over the country during what is perhaps the most divisive era in its history. Lincoln served as president for only four short years, but his impact on the country at the time and today has been huge. During his presidency, the United States was in the middle of a terrible civil war. At the center of the split between the two sides was slavery. The North was a fast-growing industrial region that was more progressive than their southern counterpart. The southern economy was based on cotton production that mostly used forced labor. The North viewed this practice as unethical and immoral, while southerners claimed it was an integral part of their culture. When Lincoln won the election, the southern states began to secede from the Union, and the war began. Lincoln vowed to end slavery during his campaign for president, while never speaking about how the country would keep its relationship with the southern states when slavery was ended. This angered many southerners, who promised to rebel if Lincoln won. The war lasted four years, and about 620,000 soldiers died. In what is considered the turning point of the war, Lincoln issued his famous Emancipation Proclamation in January 1863. What it did was gain international favor from the world because of its ethical qualities. It put pressure on those countries doing businesses with the South to review their practices. It effectively put an end to the war. Lincoln was assassinated on April 15, 1965 by a Southern sympathizer as he sat in a theater with his wife. Benjamin Franklin is one of the founding fathers who'd established the United States of America in the mid to late 18th century. He has been described by his 18th century peers and historians alike as the first American. This is due to the fact that Franklin played an integral part in creating a revolutionary force in colonial America in defiance of British rule. Franklin wore many hats during his lifetime. He was a politician, inventor, postmaster, scientist, and journalist. He served as president of the state of Pennsylvania, 
U.S. Minister of France, the first Postmaster General, and Speaker of Pennsylvania. Franklin was born on January 17, 1706, in Boston, Massachusetts, into a family of ten children. His family was working class, so Franklin's rise to prominence was not an easy one. His parents wanted Benjamin to become a clergy member for their church. But at the age of 12, Franklin began working as a printer's apprentice with his older brother. This is where Franklin learned the printing and news trade that would eventually lead to his Poor Richard's Almanac and the Philadelphia Gazette publications. This is where Franklin amassed his considerable wealth. Franklin was also a prolific inventor. He is responsible for inventing such items as the Franklin stove, lightning rod, bifocal glasses, and the flexible catheter. Part of America's popular lore has Franklin proving that lightning has electrical properties by flying a kite in a thunderstorm. This may or may not have been true, but his legend is firmly in place. Franklin was a tireless separatist and fought the English for colonial independence with dog tenacity. He made at least two diplomatic trips to the British Isles to petition for colonial independence. Upon his return from the second trip, the Revolutionary War with England had already begun. He was one of the original signers of the historic Declaration of Independence. There was a time on this land when the United States of America did not exist. Prior to the 1770s, the region was largely Indian country, with the exception of 13 British colonies in the northeast part of the country. These colonies were known as the American colonies, and were under British rule. The 13 colonies were a loosely connected group of individual states that were governed by the Continental Congress. The Congress had been at odds with the British for several years, primarily because of the taxes that were being levied by their parliament. In 1775, after a year of war between the American colonies and England, the colonists decided that it was time to become independent. The English parliament had issued two unpopular taxes, which were imposed to help support the British after the end of the Seven Years' War. The colonist asked Thomas Jefferson to write the Declaration of Independence, arguing that since the colonies had no voice in Parliament's matters, they should not be taxed. The Declaration was drafted by Jefferson on July 2, 1776, and was approved by the Continental Congress on July 4. Today, July 4 is celebrated in the United States as a day of independence from British rule. The Declaration features what has been called the most famous sentence in the English language. It reads, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These words were written to represent the moral and ethical standards the new country was meant to follow. It is a beautifully written document, and it stands for all that this country tries to be. Alexander Graham Bell, a Scottish-born inventor, scientist, and engineer, is one of the most famous people to ever live in the United States. He is credited with the invention of the first practical telephone in the world, which changed the way people communicate to this day. Born on March 3, 1847, Bell was influenced greatly by his grandfather and father, who were both involved in work related to speech and elocution. His greatest invention is the telephone, but ironically, he refused to have a phone in his work area. He felt phones were intrusive, and a nuisance. Tragedy marked Bell's childhood as both his brothers died from complications associated with tuberculosis. He came from a family of educators and his father was a university professor. His first invention was a simple corn dehusking machine 
that he built for his childhood best friend. Bell also had other talents. He possessed a talent for music, and with no formal training, taught himself how to play the piano. He was also a ventriloquist, and entertained his friends with his curious talent. Because of the booming economy in the United States, telegraph lines were being overwhelmed, and new lines had to be constructed to accommodate the traffic. The U.S. sought the help of inventors to design a line that could transmit several messages at once, which would be a marked improvement over the single transmission lines. Bell approached investors with his new idea, the telephone, and he acquired the financing needed for his work. On March 10, 1876, Bell's invention was put to the test. The first words transmitted by phone were to his assistant, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Watson heard Bell's words clearly in the next room, and the telephone came into existence. <music>